Um, hello, my name is Roger. I'm a PhD student at the Aumentec Human Lab. And today I'm here presenting m -Hair, creating a novel tactile feedback by augmenting the body hair to respond to magnetic field. So I would like to start my talk about, I'll be talking about the motivation. Okay, the motivation behind this work is social touch. Social touch has a, has a really powerful role in human development. Shaping social reward, attachment, cognitive, communication, and emotional regulation from infancy and throughout life. The lack of social touch has been linked to different brain disorders such as autism. However, social touch is, is a really complex system. We sense, we, um, we sense touch through, through our skin. Okay, basically we have two types of skin, in one side hairy skin and the other one glamorous skin. Each of these skins is composed through like different neurons and mechanoreceptors and they are in charge to let us sense and interact with the environment. These mechanoreceptors are located in, the, in different areas of the skin and basically react to different type of stimulus, like could be stretching, um, <laughs> vibrating, etc. In specific, there is one type of mechanoreceptors that has been linked to social touch, which are like CT afferents. These ones are mainly located in the um, hair, follic um, hair follicle. And the best way to, um, to stimulate them is at about like three centimeters per second is where they produce more pleasant. And, and basically through a gentle stroke and, hair, um, and as, a, as a deflection. Inspired and motivated by this research today, I'm presenting m -Hair, where basically we amend the hair to make it magnetic so we can, um, we can target the mechanoreceptors attached to the hair follicle. M-Hair relates to non-contact haptic interfaces. In non-contact haptic interfaces, there are mainly like two, um, two techniques. One will be like acoustic base, ultra haptics is a good example. And then the other one will be air base. Okay? I w so basically the main difference is M-Hair, we target certain type of mechanoreceptors. For a second, I would like you to just blow in your forearm. So if you blow in your forearm, like really gentle, you can, okay, you didn't feel, you just feel air, right? Okay, now <laughs> blow in your, in, in the, um, in your hand, in your palm. You can also feel a perception, right? It, it's slightly different, but you can feel a perception in both. What I'm trying to point is when, like, for example, in the case of air, we, we trigger um, a cocktail of mechanoreceptors, which which basically we perceive in both in the hairy and the glabrous skin. In m -hair, basically we just target the ones that are in the, in the hair follicle. So if we break the problem that we try to solve in two sections, we have in one side what will be like hair augmentation and the other one hair stimulation. So first of, first of all, the question is like, how do we augment this hair? The answer is pretty clear, it's through cosmetics. Okay, so we use cosmetics for beauty purposes We've been using them, like right now, for example, I'm wearing like wax on my hair. HCI community has explored cosmetics and cosmetics through the, through the time to use it as a input interfaces as well as a output interfaces. There is also like cert, um, certain work that, that targets like hair interfaces. Basically, it's more located on the skull hair where we have like a touch, they, they enable like a capacitive interface, and then also like some um, color thematic, I'm um, sorry, like changing the color with the temperature as well as like shaping. There's also some work about like um, a wig that enables like communication. However, there is a problem when we talk about like this um, cosmetics, like or this cosmetics on body interfaces, and it's like the electronics. The electronics are they need to be connected to the, to the extremity. So you can imagine if you have a hair, how do you put uh, some electronics or like a thermal thread attached to them? It's impossible, right? So in M hair, what we do is like we rely in a type of cosmetics that we call magnetic cosmetics. Okay, these, are, these ones are, mas are cosmetics that have a um, high concentration of ferromagnetic particles, such as iron. Or at some case, it could even, it could even um, have magnetic properties such as rare air magnet, like neonidium neon, neon, neon powder. These cosmetics, 
interact with magnetic field and basically they enable sensing and actuation and actuating. And interestingly, we can find them already available off the shelf. Okay, so I just collect like four examples of uh, available magnetic cosmetics that are there, which have like or high, um, high concentration of ferromagnetic particles or even at some case like um, active neonidium par particles. So ultimately in m what we generate is a recipe using off-the-shelf cosmetics. We, in, for example, in the, um, in the demo that I'm doing, I'm just showing this, this combination where basically we use a ferromagnetic mask that is normally used as an exfoliant and we mix it with like um, wax gel as a carrier. With this, we achieve like to have a really easy cosmetic with a, having a safe properties. The way that we apply it is through an eyelash brush to avoid to touch with the skin. Yes. Yep. So once we have this hair augmented, now it's like how can we how can we stimulate it? So this hair now reacts to magnetic field. In our case, what we like for the study that we wanted to perform, basically we, we set up a certain requirements on the magnetic field. We wanted to have a precise magnetic field of about like one centimeter so we can move a magnetic field around. We target at three centimeters per second. We wanted to move this at three centimeters per second, which is the, which is the, um, the speed that has related to the CT afferents. Then we wanted to have a surface capable to stimulate all the body, uh, all the forearm, so about 20 to 30 centimeters, and we didn't want this um, actuator to touch the skin or the hair. So we placed it at about 25 millimeters. In terms of like the magnetic strength, if we compare it with real, um, like known magnetic fields, in one case we have like the magnetic earth that is about 50 microteslas, we will have like a magnetic um, from the fridge that is about like five milliteslas, or if we go to MRI machines, it's about three teslas. For magnetic hair, based on our observations, we, we saw that with, by applying 50 milli, milliteslas, we obtain about one degree of deformation for the hair. So it's a quite strong magnetic field, the, the one that we need. The main two techniques right now to stimulate, uh, to generate magnetic fields are through permanent magnets or electromagnets. So in this case, based on the, our requirements, we decided to, to go with a, with a permanent magnet. The way that we, that we achieve it is basically we mount this permanent magnet on a CNC machine, and then we were able to stimulate it at the speed that we wanted and with a pretty high accuracy. This is an example. So with this machine, we perform a formative study with six participants with, um, with the goal to understand the sensation that we were generating. Um, yeah. in, well, now in the presentation, I will be talking on a like, couple details in the paper, you'll far, you, you will find more. So one of the things that we wanted to understand is like how discriminative was this sensation. So basically, we, we perform like a a subset of shapes in different locations and in different sizes through, through the body. Um, on the, well, the, what will be the group A is like different locations, B will be the sizes, and C is like the shapes. On the shapes, the users were asked to draw by themselves, so they didn't have any reference. So we can observe some, some degree of discriminative perception, which, which is honestly higher than what we expected. However, the interesting part is on the subjective description. So the participants were also stimulated during one minute with this haptic sensation, and we, were asked, we asked them to provide like with five eye, with, with words that describe the, their sensation. From the six participants, we got about 25, 25 words, and these are a collection of them. So all of them reported the sensation to be windy, as well as five of them pleasant, touch, and then we had like some comments of like unique, ticklish, gentle, etc. So. All these words, according to the affective rating, are associated with positive, balance, and slightly calm arousal. So with this work, we show the potential behind hair augmentation and hair stimulation. We can observe, uh, we can see our work opening two main areas of, to, uh, for further exploration 
on one side, there is the theoretical, where basically upstream research could deeply understand, could further explore like what type of haptic sensation are we performing, and if it, what are the mechanoreceptors that we are triggering, as well as applied research to miniaturize this in order to to enable interactions in the in the um, never interactions and applications. With this, I I conclude my talk. I also have a demo. Um, you can come and like feel how it like evaluate how it feels. Thank you. Okay, we have time for a bunch of questions. All right. While we wait, I have a question. So I was wondering, did you do any experimentation with um, sort of fast attraction? Um, and repel of the, so to do like more complex pa pattern that could be higher frequency mm -hmm. to, I don't know, maybe invoke some other other uh, yeah. sensations. Yeah. So in 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 this particular, basically, we didn't we didn't evaluate this part. The main thing that we evaluated was the discriminative as well as the as the, um, the the discriminative as well as the subjective description. Yeah. But it's a really good point and something that we would like to do also in future work. Any other questions? Uh, so, so I have one, one more. Uh, so what about the safety and uh, yep. um, on one hand and on the other hand, how do you clear this off yeah. when you're done with your magnetic so experience? So these, I mean, these, these cosmetics are basically like really easy to remove. So just like water on the, on the, um, on the toilet just go away. In terms of safety, it's a really good question. It's one of the main reasons why we decided to go with off-the-shelf cosmetics, even though when we talk about like cosmetics, most of them have, um, they have already like ferromagnetic particles like iron oxide. So it's, if, yeah, it's quite, they are inside the, um, the safety concerns. The main reason, for example, that we didn't evaluate the, um, ch the rapidly changing frequencies, because when you put the body, the human body with an altern magnetic field, then you, you need to have a certain regulations. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So let's give the author another set of applause.